Welcome back to the shop. I don't have much application for a framing hammer or carpentry hammer. It's just not what I do. But I've got this thing kicking around. It came from my grandfather's shop, so I figure it's worth. I think it might be fun to restore this thing or try to try to reclaim it somehow. And I think the the handle here being chipped, it's got it's not loose. The the fitment is real nice on the head. The handle's not in horrible shape except for the very bottom here. And I'm thinking I might be able to save that with some epoxy. So I'm going to clean this thing up and we'll take a stab at repairing a, the base of this with some epoxy. So the belt sander got some of it okay, but there's none of these surfaces are really truly flat. So for that I'm going to use a die grinder to get in there with a series of different discs. They have all sorts of different things. This is a flappy paddle sander. This is an abrasive wheel, like a scotch Bright. But I don't want to remove that logo, so we'll start with that. Hopefully you can see that logo. Heller, I did a little bit of research on my phone. It's it's hard to tell. There's no date on it. The company actually went out of business in 2006. So, the, but it started in the 1800s. So, from the condition of the sandal, I'm sure this thing isn't that old. So that's looking pretty decent now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dam of sorts around the outside of this with painter's tape and then I'll fill this with epoxy. We'll let that dry, come back and sand it. I changed my mind. I've got some Bob Smith Industries epoxy. But years ago I took a woodworking class with a gentleman named Peter Waldock and he used JB Weld in the class and I was really astounded at how well it worked and I think if you go over and watch Project Farm he does a couple tests and JB Weld <laughs> works extremely well on wood so I think that might be the appropriate thing and I learned watching the Scout Crafter that you want to do the hardener second because if you do the hardener first the vapors could set off the, the catalyst will set off the, the hardener the non harder side, the steel side. Now I mixed too much, so I decided to fill in. There was a couple splits that they didn't look like they were very deep, but I think it might be an interesting contrast between the JB Weld and the finish that I put on this after I sand all this off. And hopefully I have enough built up around here to reconstitute the base of that handle. So we'll give this a day to dry and come back and finish it out. Well, it's 24 hours. It's as dry as it's going to get. We'll bring this over to the sander and see what it turns out like. But I think that filled it in really nicely. It's, I think it's more than sufficient to, <laughs> to fix that part, but now here's the real, real test. Let's go ahead and stain this and then see what it looks like afterwards. I don't have much in the way of wood finish, but we'll try this. Well, there it is. You can obviously see that it's not meant to disguise the imperfections in the handle. 
but I can say that that's a sturdy repair and that should be on there for the foreseeable future from my understanding of how JB Weld works with wood. And I filled in a couple, there was little potholes in the, in the handle there, the JB Weld just for sport and some of the cracks. But I think it's a respectable pseudo restoration for something that I'm going to put in the drawer and, and use. Again, I don't do a lot of carpentry work, but now I can if I wanted to. So I just wanted to share it. I thought it might be a little different with the JB Weld. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I hope you're having a good night.